Hi, I'm Brian Falchuk, and I want to talk to you about why you need to ask for what you really want. It may sound kind of obvious, right? If you want something, ask for it. But it's a lot bigger than that. And the thing is, we don't actually do it. So how many of you have had really big goals or dreams that maybe you got scared, maybe they're too big, and you don't want to put it out there because you're afraid someone might laugh at you or watch you fail in trying to achieve it, so you hold back. Maybe you did that when you were a kid, when you didn't have the whole sense of responsibility and reality and restrictions, but now you hold back a bit. Thing is, that feeling keeps us from achieving what we really want, myself included. And I decided to overcome it and grab those things I really wanted, and I want to figure out how can I help others do the same thing. So I want to share what I learned in my uh, real life research, if you will. So let me start with the story. So two years ago and one week today, I published my first book called Do A Day. And when I was getting ready to put it out, people around me were like, what's your, what's your goal? Are you trying to sell like millions of copies and quit your job and retire? Which sounds awesome, but um, that wasn't really my goal. I really just wanted to have impact and have impact in such a broad way that it was helping a lot of people change their lives. And so I had these specific goals, these specific dreams that were sort of measurements of that impact. And I wanted to share them with people. Even if they were a little bit crazy or wild or big, I wanted to throw them out. So when people ask me, like, what, are you trying to, what are you trying to achieve? What are your goals? I gave them two. The first one said, I want to be on stage doing a TED Talk. I'm not quite there, right? This is TEDx, this is my third TEDx, so I feel like trains left the station, making progress. I even made this uh, not too ridiculous, but slightly ridiculous Photoshop image. I slapped my body on, I don't even know who. <laughs> Look, I even doubled it up and put it on the, uh, on the big screen, although my head's protruding. About, anyway, I went, I went like full bore on it, right? Like vision board kind of way. And I threw that image up on Facebook, and the likes just started pouring in. And people were saying things like, oh my god, I love TED Talks. Or, Is that from you doing one? Oh my, I wish I knew. I would have been there. Or people were like, when you do one, I'm going to be in the front row. Really, really supportive. And people who knew the story of my book were like, that makes such a great TED Talk. Hint, hint, Ted. Um, but what I never got was anyone being like, oh, you need to come back down to earth. Like, let's get real for a minute. They were really, really supportive. I love that. I put out my goal. Everyone had my back. And then I shared the second goal. Slightly different situation. You ready for it? I want to sit in the woods with Oprah on Super Soul Sunday, uh, you know, doing an episode of the show. Now, I didn't put out this really high quality Photoshop job where my head clearly is the right size, angle, and lighting. Poor Joel Osteen. I think that's who I. Uh, slap that giant version of my head on. It's like a bobblehead. It's kind of scary. I didn't put that out there. Yet even without that image, I got a very different set of reactions than I got with the TED Talk. And it wasn't about getting on TV. It wasn't about meeting Oprah. I'm fine with all those things, but that's not what it was. It was, if I was going to be able to be on her show, that would only come because my message was resonating in such a big way that she would have me on the show. And so I got some reactions, like I said, very different. And typically I'd hear one of two things. Either people were exercising that great piece of advice from their parents, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I get like silence, crickets, maybe a strange look on their face. Or more frequently, I got the reaction that some of you gave, laughter. It's OK. Um, it wasn't laughter with me. It was laughter at me, but that's OK. But what I decided is, yeah, people are laughing at me. Do I care? Is that enough for me to stop on going for my goals? Am I not going to put my book out? Am I not going to try to get the message out there? And am I not going to strive to have the impact I want to have and hopefully land me on those stages and couches in the middle of the forest? I don't know who has a couch in the forest, but Oprah does. Uh, am I going to stop just because people think it's ridiculous? No. I'm not. And when I realized that feeling, being that I also am a life coach, I was like, I got to tap into this. I need to figure out why do I feel different about this, and why am I willing to push ahead even in the face of people laughing so I can help others do the same? Because we all have big goals we're afraid to share. And so I asked myself, 
you know, what's the worst thing that could happen by me putting this out there? Like, put the laughter aside for a minute. What's the worst thing that happens? Because I'm not on Super Soul Sunday right now. So the worst thing that could possibly happen is nothing. I'm just still not on Super Soul Sunday. So maybe there's no downside. When you ask for something, there's only two possible outcomes. You either get something or you get nothing. That's it. And since you have nothing right now, there's really only one way it can go that's different from right now, and that's you get where you want to be. Otherwise, nothing changes. So it's kind of only upside. But that's not how we tend to think about these things. Right? We don't think about the upside. Instead, we end up focusing on the negativity. Why do we care so much about nothing? Like, I never really thought about it that way. That's like, why am I bothered by something that doesn't even exist? Current state of affairs, no different. I kind of like my life right now, so why is that so bad? It's fear. And the more I looked in myself, the more I talked to people I was coaching and people around me, it's fear. Now maybe you're like, yeah, obviously, you're afraid to get laughed at or whatever. Yeah, okay, fear's not enough of an answer for me to say, now I know what to do about it. We gotta dig into this some more. So I did. And the more I looked into it, I tried to figure out what is it that we fear. And a number of things came out. We fear judgment. It's like all the people who laugh, oh, I don't want to put my goal out there because I might get laughed at. I might be seen as ridiculous. I don't want you to feel that about me. That's worse than nothing, right? That's worse than getting your, your goal or, or not getting it. We fear public failure. So if I put my goal out there, and I make a big splash, and I don't achieve it, all you know that I didn't achieve it. You all know that I'm a failure. That's worse than nothing. We fear rejection. I'd rather sit on the side, miserable at the dance, not asking that special someone to dance, than taking the risk of having a good time with someone I want to have a good time with, and having them tell me, no, I don't like you. No, you're not good enough. No, I don't want to dance with you. That's worse than nothing. But actually, none of that is the reason we do it. Or act more accurately, the reason we don't do it. We don't put our goals out there. We don't ask for what we really want. Those are surface level things. I kept digging, and there was one consistent fear that actually was holding us back. And that fear is the confirmation that we aren't good enough. And what we're confirming is something within us. Because that fear comes from us. It's this little voice inside that's telling us, you're not good enough, you can't do it, and you don't deserve it anyway. We don't want that little voice to get to say, I told you so. That's really what we're afraid of. Now, it comes from us. We're doing this to ourselves. How? The more I looked into it, the more I observed. I saw all the behaviors that we do that reinforce this message that we're not good enough, that we don't deserve it, that we're not capable of achieving it. So why bother asking in the first place? And there's a few things we do. The first, we make jokes at our own expense. We all do this. It's socially acceptable. It's kind of a societal norm. We self-deprecate all the time. We put ourselves down as a joke so other people don't do it seriously, because that's worse. Like my little Oprah image, you guys notice I made jokes about it? I made fun of the picture. I could have been like, look, I know I didn't do the best job in Photoshop, but yeah, let's go do it, just like with the TED Talk. Same thing, not the best Photoshop job, but I was all empowered about it and positive about it. I talked myself down before anyone else could. I was one of those people laughing at me. So we all do it. We don't take compliments. What happens when someone compliments you? What do you say? You don't just say thanks. You say thanks, but, and then you talk the whole compliment down. So, oh, your hair looks great today. Oh, thanks, but I just had it done. Normally, it looks terrible. Or you did a great job presenting the other day. Oh, thanks, but you know, I kind of messed up on that slide, and I forgot that one point I was going to make. Or the, the example that everyone seems to get is like going to someone's house for dinner and complimenting them on the food. What do they say? Like, oh, thanks, but you know, I forgot to put this in, or uh, you know, the, the dessert didn't come out right, or thanks, but I kind of overcooked the chicken. My brother had this way of always saying, like, he'd basically 
undo your compliment about the current meal and redirect you to last week. He always talked about like, oh, you should have been here last week. It was just awesome. Like every time I'd have dinner at his house, he'd always bring up whatever it was last week until finally I was like, why don't you just have me over last week? It's always better than whatever you just made us. We hold back on celebrating our wins. And again, it's a societal thing. Like we don't want to be seen as egotists. We don't want to put others down. So we stifle it. When we do really well, we talk it down. or We don't talk about it at all. Maybe we do in some things, but there's lots of things where we're so worried about the perception that we don't say anything. A good friend of mine in high school got like straight A's always, not just A's, like 100 on every test. And every time he did, he'd have some excuse for it. Oh, that was because you know, what everyone, everyone did poorly, I just did a little bit better and it was on a curve. Like he always had some ready-made excuse. Like, no, you're really smart and you dedicate yourself. Like, why are you talking it down? Lastly, I love this game. Who, who knows the game, who has it worse? Do you guys play this game? So it's like, who slept less last night? Who has more homework? Whose professor's worse? Whose boss is meaner? Whose significant other loves them less? Who has less money? Whose car is... Like, who had the flu worse last week? We all get into it. It's like, oh my god, I, didn't, I, I think I was working until like 11 last night. I'm like, 11? What are you, a baby? Like, I, we were up till 2, and we didn't even finish. And then what do you hear back? Oh, well, like, last week, I didn't sleep for like three, day, three days. It's just this back and forth. No matter how bad you paint the picture, they're going to come back worse. And ultimately, like, either it never ends until, I don't know, you're both dead in your stories, or or the one who's the most miserable, it, like gets that prize, like, yeah, my life's the worst. <laughs> what are we doing? What we're doing is actually celebrating the most negative things we can and reinforcing this image that your life has to be miserable, or it is miserable, and it's a bad thing to say it isn't. Right? We've got this vicious cycle of negativity going on. Enough. All right, enough. Let's change. So I'm lucky. I get to work with people to help them not just say enough, but do something about it. So come up with some ways to help combat it. And I want everyone here and everyone watching this to join me. You guys can all do this. It's simple stuff, and we're going to start to turn the tide. So what can we do? Everybody I work with, I give this first exercise to. It's called stop the butt. And most people think it's the other butt. I'm not talking about that. Just B-U-T. When someone pays you a compliment, including yourself, when you have a nice thought about yourself, as soon as that word but comes into your mind, stop. That's your signal. Just say thank you. Or if you can't bring yourself to say thank you yet, maybe you're not at that place, you can appreciate how they felt about it. And just say, I'm so glad you feel that way. Or wow, that means a lot to me. Just like appreciate their happiness. And eventually you'll start to appreciate your own. So it's not, Oh, you did a great job. Thanks, but it's just thanks. Just allow for that good thing about you to be out there. Not only do you feel better, but think about the other person. They've just told you how they feel, and if you keep going with your dismissal, you're telling them their feelings are invalid. Nobody likes their feelings to be invalidated, so stop doing it. They're not going to keep supporting you if you keep invalidating how they feel. So stop the but. Everybody's going to start doing that now. That's your key word. Next, don't play who's got it worse. It's not a cool game. It's not that fun. You don't even have an app for it. If someone wants to play who's got it worse, be a good friend and have compassion. Don't invalidate their misery by trying to say you've got it worse. Just say, wow, that sounds really tough. Even if you do have, like, even if they were working till 11 and you went till 1, they don't need to, you don't need to go back and forth. Just say, wow, that must have been really hard, or you must be really tired, or I'm sorry to hear that. Leave it there. Be a good friend. Have compassion. Don't start sparring with them, because you're both going to lose. And lastly, allow for the good. If you guys have a win, it's OK. You don't have to talk it down. If you have a success, feel it. Now, don't gloat. Don't put other people down. But it's perfectly fine to do well. There's a difference between humility an egotism where you don't have to humiliate yourself to not be seen as an egotist. Like, you can still have humility, but
but also respect yourself and your successes. So what we're doing is turning that vicious cycle of negativity into a virtuous cycle of self-reinforcing reinforcing positivity. When you stop focusing on the bad, you start going for the good, including those wild dreams that you think people might laugh at you about. So I want you all to ask yourselves, what dream do you have that you're not asking for right now? What support do you need from others that you're afraid to ask for? What support do you need from yourself that you're not asking for? If you really want it, just ask. I'm not just preaching this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice it too. So officially, Oprah, if you're watching this, which you probably are, um, <laughs> I'm ready when you are. You can like DM me or whatever. I'm ready. Love the couch. I'm happy to sit on it anytime. Thanks, everyone.